Well. All right, here we are live. Thanks to everybody who's uh, watching this. And uh, we've got one of the best guests you could possibly have. Um, how many people could say at just 19 years old, they joined one of the biggest bands in the world and have continued to have a successful career since that. So uh, not only, and I've worked with a lot of people, and not only is our guest today uh, one of the best rock drummers and, and musicians, but he's also one of the nicest guys um, that I've ever worked with. So it is a pleasure to welcome um, from ACDC and Dio, um, the great Simon Wright. All right, there you are. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Good. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for doing this. No problem. Pleasure. You know, we, I was saying we're at a time when people need entertainment more now than ever, you know. Yeah, it's uh, strange times indeed. Worrying times, yeah. For sure. And I think it's great that, you know, maybe people could turn off the news and go on YouTube and, and talk to some of their favorite musicians or learn stuff um, about some of their favorite musicians. And, and for that little time, <laughs> not think about this crazy world. Yeah, I think everything helps. Yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. and it gives us all a chance to catch up in a sense, because normally <laughs> we're too busy, you know, traveling and doing other things to, you know, to catch up like this. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was saying, I know that you've answered some of these questions so many times. And now that everyone's at home, everyone's got a YouTube or a, a Instagram or interview. And so, uh, you know, I'm sure you're tired of some of these, but there's always someone new tuning in who wants to know a lot about your career. But also, Simon, we're going to talk about um, five albums that you recommend that people can listen to while they're home, because a lot of people are stuck at home out of work. And this is a great time to catch up on on music. And so you have a vast knowledge of music. And uh, so this would, wouldn't just be, you know, current things, just five records that you really recommend. And maybe people will be exposed to something that they didn't know. So we're going to talk about that. But first, of course, we got to start with the question that everyone wants to know. How does a 19-year-old kid from the UK end up in ACDC? Oh, it was a uh, pure um, accident, coincidence. There was an advertisement in a... Uh, um, a music paper, and I was in London at the time. They used to have the, you know, music newspapers, and in the back there was a class, the classified ads, and it said, um, uh, "Drummer wanted. If you don't hit hard, don't apply." So my friend was there, and she said, "Well, you hit hard, don't you?" So I went, uh, "Well, yeah." So <laughs> anyway, she sort of coerced me into uh, answering the ad. So I answered the ad, and they they tell me to um you know go to this um a, a rehearsal place and it was quite a fancy kind of rehearsal place right. a little bit expensive um but anyway i get there and the drum tech is there and he asked me to play to play to three songs there was a drum kit and a, and a pa system do you remember the songs oh yeah yeah of course yeah yeah black dog uh by zeppelin which, which isn't easy there's some funny stops in that you know there is a count but it's you know you gotta think a little bit but i just i caught up with it anyway uh the other songs were tush by zz top and shoot to thrill by acdc yeah. so i played and went through the songs and after and when i finished they said that that was good we'll we'll be in touch and i went oh right you know um but about three hours later he called me up and said can you come down tomorrow and i said no i can't i haven't got any money so he said, well, don't worry about that. Get yourself in a taxi and come back down. So I thought, oh, well, OK, well, they must be interested then. So, you know, I, I get there the next day and he meets me in the lobby and he takes me down these corridors and there are all these flight cases um, with ACDC written on them. So I, I sort of tapped him on the shoulder and I go, you got to be joking, right? And he went, no. <laughs> I went, oh, shit. <laughs> It's That's incredible. So you didn't know you were auditioning for ACDC? No, no, it didn't say in the in the uh, classified ad about who the band was, and th th there was no indication. And I, I really didn't know that ACDC were looking for a drummer. To be honest right. with you, um, there wasn't much talk about you know the the Phil Rudd leaving. So um, I go down the corridor, and he opens the door, and there's Angus and Mal and Cliff. 
and they were they were just great i mean they were just so down to earth there was no rock star stuff going on or anything you know they were so down to earth which made it a lot you know which made it easier to to deal with <laughs> now was know? this in, was this in london yeah it's a place called gnomis so um, they came out there to look i guess so i heard they'd been looking in america as well um and they i heard also that they they you know were looking they had looked at a lot of drummers so you know uh i, I had no idea why they picked me but you know it was I, I won't argue with that you know um so yeah you know they said well what do you know and i said well i know three or four we could go through and so we went through them and they they said great you know and um then they you know sort of moved over to the couch and sat down and started talking i thought well i, I better follow them then <laughs> you know? right. so anyway i'm over there and they started talking about the like touring and schedules and stuff and i i it felt like a conversation I, I shouldn't be, you know, privy to. Um, it sounded kind of private. So I just sort of tapped Malcolm. And I said, does does this mean I'm in the band? And he, he went, yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? So, you know, I was like, I, I you know, I've told this story a lot. I couldn't wait to get out of there and start making phone calls. and Yeah, tell your friends. Tell my friends and my dad and, my, you know, all my... Uh, my family and stuff and all but uh yeah that was that and after that my whole life changed so. and that same drum tech that you met with that was phil rudd's um drum tech who ended up becoming your drum tech right that's right dickie jones he'd been phil's tech for a long long time and uh he was my tech for about eight years um and i believe he's still there today he was yeah he went on to be chris's tech so he's 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 family you know you know, being that young, Simon, how do you what do you, how do you deal with the business end of it? You know, nowadays you would have had so many lawyers and contracts, and of course you just you'll take the gig no matter what. But how do you negotiate money and, and those type of things? Um, yeah, it, it was basically uh, I. There were no lawyers involved or anything. I mean, I just went in there and they offered me this, and I thought, wow, that's really good. Um, you know, I mean. There wasn't that time. It wasn't that that kind of uh, situation, if you like. Um, you know, it's it, it just, I, and I was just dealing with my business. I had no business, you know, with the band. I was never involved with any of the business of, of the band. I was right. purely to play drums. Um, later on, I did obviously I did get an account an accountant, um, and. Um, yeah, it was it was all good. They treated me really, really well. Does anyone tell you that you know if this works out, we want to make records with you, or is, do do you know that you're going to be in there for a while? No, I mean I, we just you know started rehearsing, and then you know we, you know I I had to start rearranging my life a little bit because I I, I was a little bit f uh, financially better off and stuff, so. Uh, but no, we'd rehearse and stuff, and and um, you know uh, for the tour we did because the album was already done when I first joined, and Phil had left after the album, so the 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 next job was to set up for the tour for the Flick of the Switch tour. So we did. How that. fast did that happen? Um, I want to say it was about. It, it wasn't that long after I got the job so to speak i mean it was probably maybe two and a half three months something like that yeah and then next thing you know you're playing giant you know i know you played locally with bands uh, at home but now you're playing massive places yeah I, the the, the I, i'm pretty sure the first place that the first show was in calgary uh, at the uh place called the saddle dome mm -hmm. um and and they they were great i mean you know <laughs> they did warn me that when the you know when the lights go down it's going to get really loud you know and yeah. they were right it was absolutely deafening um but the good thing about that band is like i was saying earlier there's no rock star thing you know they're all good mates and and the same thing with the crew <coughs> excuse me with the lighting crew with the sound crew with the backline crew they're all mates you know there's no um 
high kind of hierarchy thing sure. going worries going on it was just such a you know you, you had to do the business when you got up there but you know they were all nothing but encouragement uh which is cool you know what you couldn't ask for a better situation you know to step into oh it, it was great it really was they're great people and they 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 still are uh, and so okay so you the first record you make is fly on the wall which is 85 um, yeah so you got the gig in i think 83 so um so talk a little bit about uh that the recording process for fly on the wall and what they uh you know, again, this is so new to you. You know what I mean? Uh, what, yeah. uh, what was it like? It was it was cool. It was very relaxed. I mean, we rehearsed, I remember, in a, in a, in a pretty s strange place. It was like, like a castle in um, in uh, in uh, down near London. Yeah. <laughs> they had a friend who owned this castle. So we were rehearsing in the in the turret of this castle. We all set up in there in this big round room, you know, and mm -hmm. and it was great. You know, we ran through the songs. Some songs had already been sort of worked out and some needed to be, uh, you know, messed with a little bit and made better. And um, it, it was cool. It was very relaxed. We were off down the pub as well. So it, it, sure. it was cool, you know. And then we ended up going to um, uh, Switzerland and we recorded it in the casino, which burnt down. Um, hence the song "Smoke on the Water." Right, Deep purple. So that you know that was amazing as well. You 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 know all the history behind that uh, that building and stuff. And but, for you, it must have not been as you know, for them. There's a lot of pressure to follow up and put out a massive record. For you, you're the new guy. I'm sure it's exciting just to be going through this. Absolutely, that's all it was. I mean, there was a lot of changes that were going on. I I did notice within within the whole camp, you know, like the business camp of it and stuff, and people coming and going and stuff like that, you know. And um, but I really enjoyed it. I mean, what's not to enjoy? I mean, yeah, it, it's in Montreux, Montreux, Switzerland, it, the lakes there, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, this is it was far from the way you grew up. All of a sudden, you're in an amazing situation. Yeah, <laughs> where you could afford to get to uh, the second audition. Now you're, you know, you're at the in Switzerland. So, and then you guys toured pretty extensively for that record, right? Yeah, it it, it seemed like I can't remember exactly how long, but uh, all of the tours that I did with with the band seemed, you know, were were a good length uh, because you know. Um, they're just a great, you know, all those hits they have, you know, the, the show is, is amazing, you know. Yeah. So um, there were lots of places for us to play, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so, okay, so you did that for a while. And then um, from there you go to, um, well, the next record would be Who Made Who. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what's a, what are your memories of that a little bit? Well, it was a, <clears throat> it was kind of I was hoping it would be, you know, some more original songs. In in the end it ended up being kind of a a, a film track. Right. Uh, Maximum overdrive, right? Yeah, you know, and uh <laughs> the less said about that one the better. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Emilio Estevez vehicle, but but I mean a big Stephen King, you know, story, just probably not the best movie. Yes, let's put it that way. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, somebody out there watching, yeah, you know, probably loves that movie. You know, each to their own. Maybe some people like it, but I found it. I don't know, whatever. No, but um, yeah, there was there was that we did the track "Who Made Who," which was cool, um, and some of the um, you know the other pieces on the album were from the from the movie, but right. um, the rest was um, was like a greatest hits package. So you know, it, it's okay. I was. It, it's good. They're all great songs. I mean, come on, you know, but I was hoping there'd be more original on there, but it was a great time. Uh, you know, we ended up uh, in in the Bahamas doing that in, in NASA. They pick cool places to record. I know. I You know, it, I, it, it wasn't my idea. They just, you know, that's where I ended up. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. Um, yeah, and um, you know, it, it was a little strange. Some of the sequences that we would play to from the movie they had like tv 
televisions up in the studio and you there's like a a, cra uh, a race scene with the truck so you know we thought uh, so they put that on the screen and you'd sort of play to it and do the hits and stuff like that you know just to make keep it in sync um but I don't know. It just seemed a little strange at the time. To I me. can imagine, yeah. And yeah. Bring, a, a funny opportunity comes along because they make a video for You Shook Me All Night Long, which becomes the video that everybody sees. I mean, that's the video that MTV played, and you're playing drums um, in that video. You know, So when people think of ACDC, they're thinking of that video. And I know it's um, Phil playing drums, but, I mean, but your face is you know, going to be on TV forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, that was Phil playing drums, but uh, yeah, no, it was great to be involved. It's funny, funny storyline on that video too. Brian in the bath scrubbing his back. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> walking down from the liquor store and uh, yeah. yeah, very funny video. And where was that filmed? Uh, that was in London, I believe. I forget the name of it. It's a big old theatre. Um, I think we used it too for the Heat Seeker videos. Okay. okay yeah i'll forget the name of it and now was there a, so you you must have toured for who made who as well right oh yeah yeah we had uh <coughs> somebody came up with a cool idea that they'd run competitions when we were doing the u.s tour because there were still radio stations around then right and these competitions where kids could you know who won got to come to the show and above the drum kit were these rises like a walkway either side and they would dress up as angus and get handed a you know a cardboard guitar and they'd actually be on the stage with us uh you know doing their thing you know and yeah. what a thrill you know what a thrill for them a cool uh, concept yeah. and and marketing ahead of its time you know <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah yeah okay uh so then next would come how about, how about this photo Yikes! Look at those what, strapping lads. What like, about Angus's uh, <laughs> bathing suit, if you call it that? What about it? I don't know. <laughs> what year do you, what What year do you think this photo is? I think that that was taken in Rio. We uh, would it was during the Rock in Rio because there were, all the bands were at that same hotel. Oh, uh, wow. The Scorpions were there. Uh, Ozzy was there, I think, as well um and yeah because we had like three four days off there so you know i didn't bring any shorts so i cut my jeans off <laughs> well yeah but you know what in the long run your photo holds up um you know yeah i don't know about that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah so then uh so the next would be uh blow up your video yes now, what can you tell me about uh recording of that record it was cool. It was in France this time. Um, Another so, great place. Yeah, it, it was. I forget which part of France, but the studio had been used by quite a lot of people, like um, David Bowie, I think, and uh, Robert Palmer. I could be wrong. I think that's it was those guys. But anyway, it was a gorgeous studio. It was called Studio Miraval, um, and it was set inside of a a winery, a working winery. So these huge wine barrels around, but it was a great session. I mean, you know, on um, well, on Who Made Who, George and Harry Vander came in uh, to do some of the production, and <clears throat> they carried on, and they were they were there to do this album as well. And they're they're brilliant. They they really keep things on track, you know, and working. And there's not much downtime, you know, right. which I like. Um, you know, some downtime's okay but i like to keep moving forward you know yeah. and uh they did that and um they were great to work with and uh beautiful uh uh sound room big long barn like sound room uh, pretty good drum sound in there and there's some pretty good tracks on that album I think. oh yeah no there's some some great stuff and uh you know some videos that became pretty popular as well and there was a, a home video uh that was really popular um you know were you able to enjoy doing all this you know sometimes when you go on the road or you get a successful gig you so caught in the moment that you really don't have a chance to sort of um uh, smell the roses um yeah there was time off at home and you know that 
Um, I mean, more when you're out in these exotic places and you're touring, were you able to really enjoy it or was it just so much of work? It, it was a little bit difficult. Yeah, we were in a, these places, but we weren't, you know, it's like a lot of touring acts and stuff. You, you don't really get much time off. Right. You're moving on, you're moving forward all the time, going to the next city or the next country, you know. Um, there were a couple of times, like when we were recording Fly on the Wall and, and and mostly when we were recording, we 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 we'd have time to get out and see uh, see what was going on in the town or the or the you know the country or whatever. But yeah, uh, yeah it got a little bit difficult at times when we were on the road because you know there's such a popular band that you, 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 sometimes it was difficult to get out too. You know, in the in the in the town there because you'd be sure. pounded. You know. Um, you know, you just want to enjoy it, but you you still got to meet meet everybody and sign things and stuff like that. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, you know, that that's, yeah. you you don't get much free time. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, in 1989 um, comes around, and at that point, I th I think you you were looking for a change. Um, I I it, it happened gradually. I mean, I, I became a little bit despondent with the whole thing. You know, I needed to move on. I was. I'm, I wanted to play different stuff, you know. The, the, I'm not knocking the the music of ACDC. I've I've said this a thousand times, you know. It's it's brilliant songs, brilliant songwriting, amazing. Um, but the drumming can be a little bit, you know. You can't really move away from it, you know. It's a pretty rigid kind of, you know, tempo and stuff, and <clears throat> not much room for. Uh, uh, trying other things and I, and it just grew on me you know after a while and they could see I was getting a bit despondent and it, I you know it wasn't fair on them so you know I just kind of moved on and I'm hooked up with Ronnie with Ronnie you know so did you I, um you know I know that they uh, Phil didn't come back right away but was there a part of you that always thought he would come back Phil Rudd yeah I you know, it's funny. I mean, not straight away, but after I'd been on the road with Ronnie and stuff, and I was kind of hoping they got Chris Slade. I mean, Chris Slade is an amazing drummer. You know, he's rock solid. And um, but you know, th there's a certain feel with Phil Rod that makes him very special with those guys, with with their sound. You know, it's you know that drum sound and the way he plays is so original to that band i mean you know and i think it's good he's come back i mean yeah. he did some pretty crazy things in that i was gonna say you never heard the song dirty deeds done dirt cheap and and took it literal <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah but, I mean, sometimes when you're not the original guy in the band i know that there's always that feeling behind you that at some point the other guy might come back um and that's why i was wondering never... if that was in your decision at all no, 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 not at all. I never, never had that feeling about it. You know, I, I don't know why. You, you, you. It's a good question, but no, and I, I always felt, you know, always welcomed and, you know, part of the band and stuff yeah. like and that. And it was a long time before he came back. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, and then also in 1989, music was beginning to change a little bit. I, I think, um, and maybe you were thinking about doing something that you might have been you know more wanted to have a different experience that's exactly what i what i what i was after you know i, I didn't want to cause a problem it's like let's just get this done and move on you know and stuff there was well it's a brave decision too because obviously financially playing in acdc is not a bad uh gig so you had a you know that's not an easy thing to do i wasn't thinking financially i was thinking you know just from my heart, you know, I loved playing drums and it was just, you know, you just got to move on. You got to find a way to do it. And thankfully I did. It wasn't too much of a troubling transition. I hooked up with Ronnie about three, four months afterwards. Right. Uh, so, and that worked out, you know, straight away. That was, that was great. We, it was a brand new band, but we all, uh, we all got along pretty well with. Well, with at that point, a lot of the old, old school Dio guys were stepping aside. I know they, because they brought in Rowan Robertson, who I think was yeah. 16 probably at the time, uh, an amazing guitar player. And 
a great guy. Um, but so at that point, Vinny had left, and then you came in and did the uh, Lock Up the Wolves record. Yep, yep. It was a whole new transition um, for Ronnie, to, you know, obviously for Ronnie too. Uh, but, we, it, you know, we would, we all got along well, and we were all, you know, aiming the straight, the, the right way to make a great record, you know, and stuff. So, and that was your first stay in Dio. So, uh, what? Why was it short? Did Dio go back to one of the other bands at that time? Or yeah, yeah, he got an offer. Um, I was. It was about two years that we were together as that band, and then he got an offer from, um, from Tony and Geezer, and yeah. uh, and I, I do, none of us blamed him or anything. I mean, what you know, great opportunity again. <coughs> And that was really at a time when music was changing. I mean, now you're talking about, you know, Nirvana and a whole new thing starting to happen. So for Dio, he's probably thinking Sabbath is probably, the, uh, you know, a good choice right now. I don't know. He, he, he just kind of, he just kind of, he didn't really talk to us much about it. He just, you know, we just found out that he's he's going to be going and doing the Sabbath thing and stuff like that. I mean... The, the the tour that we did lock up the wolves did suffer a little bit you know there was you know all that stuff with mtv and then bringing in grunge and it was very influential on a lot of people um and it was a changing time it wasn't just that way for 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 ronnie it was like that for everybody you know um a lot of the record companies just cleaned house of any kind of heavy rock or heavy metal sure and it just all changed the whole scenery changed and stuff so it might have been he was thinking well i'll better get you know i'll be you know <coughs> keep, yeah, keep things rolling with sabbath and stuff like that and he was still friends with them so it, it worked out pretty good and it's a great album dehumanizing yes, absolutely yeah. yeah and uh and and but you did end up going back and and dio made a you know you with dio you made a bunch of records and toward you know and you were with him until the very end um so you obviously yeah. had a good run with with dio yeah, I joined back up in 1998 after the 91, 90, 1991 thing. And then um, I joined back. Uh, Vinny joined after the Sabbath thing. It, it, it went back to being Dio. But then in 98, he decided he wasn't, you know, Vinny didn't want in there. I don't, I don't know why. Right. No idea why. But I, I came up back in. And, um, yeah, we were all really pleased to see each other. You know, it was... He had a in the band when I came back. It was Tracy G and um, Jeff Pilson, I think, and uh, uh, Scott Warren was the keyboard player. Right, Scott Warren. He was there until the end as well, right? Yeah, we when I come come back, we we did about another eleven years of it. So that's a good run. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a long run, but very enjoyable. Well, and you've become such a big part of that Dio history, you know, after Ronnie passed, you, you, uh, you know, uh, the Dio Disciples, you travel with that and Scott's in that band as well. And, um, and then you did the tour with the, uh, with the hologram, which I know to some people was a controversial thing. Um, but of course, no one was forced to go see it. And uh, there's, you know, young people watch these things. And that was the closest they're going to get to seeing uh, Dio with musicians who played with him. And so I think for you, that was a, a fun opportunity, a, a different opportunity, though, um, because yeah. you were to the side and, and the playing to a click with to match with the hologram. Yeah, it, it, it was a, you know, the, the idea of it came around and we got to know the guy who who, who was behind it all, Jeff, Jeff Pazzuti, and um, he explained what he was going to do. And it's it's slowly gotten better he's working on it all the time obviously not we had a lot you know a lot planned for this year obviously not that's not happening right but um yeah when he first showed it as i was kind of like ah oh, you know <laughs> and it got better and better and we did a tour last year june through the states and it, it was an amazing show you know it really was i mean um I'm not just saying it because I'm playing drums, but yeah. when you look back at it and stuff and you see some of the YouTube stuff, it's a pretty amazing show. And we're doing it out of total respect. And like you said, there's there's so many people out there who, who never got to see Ronnie live, unfortunately. So 
this is our representation of him you know this is our our celebration of him so it's um it, it's a great thing and hopefully we can get it up and running again That's i don't just... know if you've toured with uh anybody difficult in your life uh, i have and i wish they were a hologram <laughs> <laughs> that's There's a lot of people I wish were a hologram, you know, uh, it, would, it would have been a lot easier to get along with. Yeah, um, he doesn't speak back to you. Yeah. But so, I mean, and, and you've had a, obviously you've had a really amazing career and you still are passionate about playing drums. And, you know, we should also mention, you know, you play with the band Rhino Bucket for a while. And of course you were with Jeff Tate for a, a long time with his uh, Operation Mind Crime band. He did that which I think was probably a little bit different for you also. I mean, you've really varied your style of playing with all these different acts. Yeah. I, you know, I, I really meant it when I, when, you know, when I, when I left DC, uh, you know, I wanted to expand and do other stuff and all. Ronnie let me do a lot of stuff that was, you know, that I, you know, wanted to do. It was, we, we were always talking about music all the time, me and Ronnie and, and should we change this and what's that, you know, and, so that was very enjoyable that and to get on and do stuff like yeah with jeff tate it was the playing the album operation mind crime yeah. uh, uh, which is a little bit of a daunting task but we we managed to get it get it sorted out and we did that for about three years me and rudy sazo robert sazo kelly gray randy gain yeah. so yeah and uh and there was ufo in, be in between oh ufo life. was huge yeah you mean you've played with some massive uh you know, legendary bands. Yeah, UFO. Yeah. They're great people. I've I've had some great opportunities. You know, it's um, it it it's been really enjoyable. It's hard, been hard work too. I mean, I must admit, you know, uh, no getting away from that. Being away all the time and shows every night and stuff. So, you know. and now you're forced to uh, be home for a little bit. But um, so before we get into your recommendations for people to listen to, though, uh, let us know what uh, when this subsides let us know what you what's next because i know you are working on some things right now so let us know a little bit about what the future for simon is oh yeah sure yeah it's been absolutely you know nothing going on but this last couple of months my friend stuart smith got in touch and he, he wanted to do an album uh his band is called uh heaven and earth so yeah. we did we did like 11 tracks for that <coughs> And then a couple of weeks after that, another friend of mine got in touch with me, Kevin Gucci, and his band is called Of Gods and Monsters. So mm -hmm. we went in uh, last month and recorded uh, another 11 tracks. So at the moment, we're listening back to, you know, tracks that have been mixed. And uh, But like I said before that, there was nothing done really this year, you know. And I had so much planned too. I was going to be in Australia, Germany, Italy. Norway, so you know, yeah. it's uh, it it's kind of nice to be home and not you know kind of just dealing with home, but it's always great to get out on the road. That's for sure, you know. Well, and it's in your yeah, uh, you know, it's in your blood. You yeah. Know? yeah. So once you've done it for so long, um, sitting still is a daunting thing. It um, is. But, uh, <laughs> as you know, luckily, uh, you know, Simon, you're you're a brand name of your own. People know you. You're associated with acts that people love. And so, when the time comes, uh, you know, hopefully we're all uh, healthy again. That uh, I'm sure you'll be out there, and, and people will be able to see you. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm. Uh, I, I guess the way to go at the moment is like what I was saying: is studio work and stuff and all. If you can find the right studio, which is open. And you right. take the right precautions, and uh, you're safe about it. It's 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 doable, you know. I mean, we can't just keep lock being locked up, doing no. nothing forever, you know. Yeah, you can't you can't lock up the wolves forever. <laughs> <It's> for <fun. laughs> All right, Simon. So let's talk about uh, five records. These could be any uh, records. It doesn't have to be, you know, what might be something that influenced you, you know, ages ago. But let's think of five records that people who Maybe they haven't heard them. Maybe they have, but they shouldn't be listening to now. Well, I I I knew you were going to ask me this question, so I I I put down some some notes. Yes. <laughs> sure. um, I would say if you you know I mean it, it, I would say if you're locked in, you know you're at home, just put on an ACDC album. Anyone. <laughs> Which one would you? If you had to pick one um, from your career. 
which of the th of the th of the three, which would you uh, recommend? Huh. Okay. I don't know. I'll just say one of them because uh, you know. I mean, I don't think either one's better than the other one. Really, they're all over. Yeah. They were all done at different eras and different times. Maybe if I, somebody doesn't know those records, maybe if they're a newer ACDC fan and oh. they want to hear a record that you played on. Uh, oh. you know, I'm sure it's between Fly and Blow Up, uh, blow up Your Video, but uh, which one yeah. would you recommend? I'd recommend Blow Up Your Video, I think. You know, that's uh, nothing to, you know, against the other one. But, yeah, Blow Up Your Video is a pretty good album, I think. That turned out uh, pretty good. Yeah. Okay. And then, what about a, what about an ACDC record that you didn't play on? Mm, there's I mean, a, you know they're all pretty good. <laughs> there's so many that you know. There's so many brilliant albums that they did. You know that. Everyone knows that. I'd just say put on, just put it on. What, what do you call it? Rotate. <laughs> yeah, uh, like a, a mix play, a playlist or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you can't go wrong. I mean, come on. You know, it's ACDC. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what else you got? Yeah, I got well. I was thinking about you know. I always like I always like going back and listening to "Strangers in the Night" by UFO. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and it's one of those albums where it's weird. I've heard it so many times. I pretty much played it live for three years anyway. But <clears throat> when I, I go back and listen to it, and I hear little things, you know, like little new parts in it and stuff like that. It's it's weird. It's a weird record, but it's a brilliant album. And I think there's a lot of people, you know, who maybe are, are getting into, you know, classic hard rock and would hear a record like Strangers of the Night and really be blown away. You know, uh, there's nothing coming out like that now. You know? No, no, it's it's a, it's it's kind of a blend. The band UFO are kind of a hard rock, you know, melod melodic hard rock band. I mean, they have, a, you know, the, uh, Paul Raymond was there, the keyboard player, yeah. uh, along with Schenker and his guitaring. I mean, good, you know. Amazing, Phil singing and Pete jumping all over the place. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, we're just a killer band. I mean, you know, there's 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 so much going on with that band that was pretty amazing to watch. But this album really captured, I think, a moment in time. It really, really did. They were they were firing on this night. There's just they've just released a box set of about of I think about another eight shows from that same period, that same tour in america and uh i haven't heard those yet but uh it's pretty much the same set i think with maybe a couple of different songs but uh yeah ufo straight. there yeah we can't go wrong with ufo either okay no. and then you know uh, holy divers you know there's no all killer no filler by Dio. you know i mean you can just stick that on and keep it going and you, you'll find something great in there i mean it's, it's an amazing record yeah, yeah, a record that didn't age, you know. That's yeah. that if you liked it then, you'll like it now. And if you're getting into heavy metal, that's a record you can't uh, you can't miss. Yeah, there there are some um, rhythms and uh, some, you know, the style of it too. Pretty much when that thing came out, that that changed a lot of other uh, the way bands looked at stuff. It was that right. much of a the original great album it was amazing and the next one was pretty damn good too last in line so yeah <clears throat> yeah anyway and then i've got i i have a, a fondness for genesis the old stuff uh, yeah. you know um the peter gabriel years too i liked but uh up until all those albums up until like wind and weathering amazing and the live one that they did seconds out you know, um, from a musical standpoint, it's, it's just amazing. And it's it's a little mellower, this obviously, than DC and DO and stuff. But Yeah, I but like, I think that's good to have some variety. Yeah, yeah. I listen to a lot of different different types of music, not just uh, rock and stuff like that. But uh, this this is my favorite kind, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and, but, uh, yeah, Seconds Out is, is a, a big progressive sandwich. <laughs> you know, there's some brilliant songs on there, a brilliant playing between Chester Thompson and Phil Collins. Um, yeah, great sounding record too, I think. And uh, if you want something different, go listen to that. <laughs> but uh, then you've got, I like, you know, there's there's some periods of Rush that I'm not 
fond of, but you know, um, uh, Moving Pictures by Rush, I think, is an absolutely killer album. You know, I do like Rush. Um, I saw them back in 79 or 78 uh, in Manchester. They were on the touring the album All the Wills a Stage, and uh, that was an incredible show. Yeah, you were just a kid at that point. Yeah, I was younger than 19, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was fantastic. I mean, what a spectacle, you know, and the drum solo by Neil. I mean, that guy's an amazing, constantly amazing drummer. I mean, and to play that stuff every single night in a Rush show, wow. And yeah. uh, that was pretty hectic stuff back then with that album, All the Worlds a Stage. But then if you move on from there, you've got like, you know, permanent waves, moving pictures, hemispheres, farewell to kings. You know, that drumming on there to do that every night, that's pretty amazing. Um yeah, sure. but a great band. Getty Getty and Alex who, you know, very uh I think sometimes the spotlight's taken away from those two, but an amazing three piece band. There's not many bands, you know, and you know as a drummer where the drummer uh, is the guy, you know. Yeah, he, he was writing the, the lyrics as well. I mean, but uh, you know, it's it 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 was kind of a breath of fresh air for the for a band to be like that. You know, they they all seemed to be on the same page. You know, Alex took care of the guitars. Get he was doing dealing with the bass. He has said that he needed he would talk to Neil about you know the way some of the lyrics were and stuff. And but they all seemed to get along really well. So, yeah. So. Oh, maybe they just you know hate each other. But it was. No, had some career, you know. That's right. You know, I That's sadly miss Neil Peart. I think he's an innovative, brilliant musician. Yeah, that's definitely a le we're losing these these legends. You know, um, a lot of these records you talked about, we're starting to lose these people. Uh, you know, time uh, catches up. So that's definitely a, a reason to listen to these musics. And when concerts come back, <clears throat> you know, go see your heroes while, while you still can. You know, uh, I think we took a lot of things we got to do for granted. And, you know, now you look back, it's so great that you got to see the, those Rush shows and have those experiences, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's absolutely right. I mean, they're you know they're the timeless. You've got the you've got the DVDs and you've got the music and stuff, but uh, there's nothing like being at a show. And yeah, go see everybody you can. I was fortunate to see you with Dio, you know, many times That's, uh, in New York City uh, on Lock of the Wolves tour, and then later uh, Magic. I saw a bunch of times. You know, that was a big thing for Dio to play an original album from start to finish. You know, you know who was really doing that? People were expecting hits. You know and an album that you played on. And so I saw you on that tour, uh, Universal Amphitheater, which is no longer there. And yeah, here in Vegas, you know. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, sad. Uh, place. Yeah, now it's a Harry Potter attraction. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll have to, uh, you know, when, when things open back up, and it might be a minute, uh, but we got to all go out and enjoy it and, uh, and enjoy a rock and roll. And thank you for uh, spending some time with us, you know, uh, Pleasure. And letting, people, letting people hear about uh, your your amazing career. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's something that sometimes you you, you got to you look back and you, you were fortunate to do some amazing things and you're still making uh, great music. And, you know, I've gotten to uh, do some projects with you. We've had you come here to Vegas and play with the guys. And yeah. I remember we did a show in uh, Texas. We went to Houston, Texas, I think. And I sent you the set list because I was going to play a couple songs and I, I put some Ramon songs in. And you said, why, why, why are we playing these punk rock songs? <laughs> I said, oh, it's because it's what I can play. And, <laughs> and you were uh, cool enough to, to, to do it. So That was um, cool. I thought, oh, okay, I'll have a go at some punk songs. What the hell? <laughs> it's a, it was a totally different style. Uh, oh, yeah. But, big, but it was a highlight for me uh, to get to do that with you there. Oh, it was and, great. It was a really cool time. I remember Oz was there, wasn't he? You know, so that oh, was Oh, yes. Cool. Yeah, well, we had, we had a great lineup. We had Oz Fox. Yeah, uh, from yeah. from Striper, and we had Jizzy Pearl uh, from Love Hate, and uh, and we had Rowan a lot too. I don't know if Rowan did that show. I don't think he did that one, but um, no, Oz was Oz was doing it. Yeah, sometimes I would we would do Oz and Rowan together. Oh, and, oh okay, uh, yeah, which was just amazing, you know. Uh, and what a uh, uh, what a great bunch of people too. 
that was, we, I remember we had some fun just, you know, it, it's nice when you can do things and have a good time and make a little money and have an easy trip, you know. So no, that was a cool trip. I really enjoyed that. It. It's a shame we couldn't do more, but uh, I guess. You know, so we had, we had um, more luck uh, lined up. Uh, one of the, we had one, we were going to go back to Texas and the hurricane uh, ah. hit, you know, and, uh, um, but so, you know, who knows? People are going to want rock and roll again uh, very soon, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do some more stuff. So anyway, uh, thank you again, Simon. And nice. we'll stay in touch and keep an eye out on what you got going. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Take nice. care. Thanks, Take care, brother.